Broncos country, enjoy the win. 16 straight losses to the Kansas City Chiefs is over. 24 to 9. And Denver might not be sellers anymore at the NFL trade deadline. A lot to recap, a lot to talk about after this win for Denver. I don't know where to really even begin, right? Is it Justin Simmons gets his first career win against the Kansas City Chiefs? Is it Sean Payton and the Broncos sitting at 3-5 and five going into the bye? Maybe think all of a sudden we're not interested in doing a fire sale. We want to go on a bit of a postseason run. Is it playing shake it off as the Chiefs walked off the field and Patrick Mahomes suffered his first loss to the Denver Broncos in his career after battling through an illness? We're going to run through all of the stats and recaps from this Week 8 win. We'll fix that at the top of the screen here. 24-9. Denver had a 14-9 lead at the end of the half, but the Broncos controlled the clock. Sean Payton had a good game plan coming into this one, and ultimately they were able to get it frick they were able to uh, get it squared away and hold the Chiefs to nine points and score 24 points, the only team to score more than 20 points against Kansas City all year. Russell Wilson threw three touchdown passes. You had players all across the field making plays, right? Crying out loud, Drew Sanders is forcing a fumble on a punt return. You've got Baron Browning in his second game back with a strip sack on Patrick Mahomes. This defense forced five takeaways against Kansas City. Every single element was firing on all cylinders. Offense, defense, and special teams. So now Denver sits at three and five with the NFL trade deadline looming ahead. And I'm not going to be a negative Nancy. I'm not going to take away anything from this win because Broncos country should be celebrating the hell out of this win, right? First win against Kansas City in almost a decade since Peyton Manning was handing the ball off to Monty Ball for crying out loud. So the streak is over, and boy, oh boy, does Sean Payton and this team need this, right? Not only do they need a bit of a statement win, but they need to get this monkey off their back. And with all the weather coming in and all the snow and Mahomes feeling a little bit under the weather himself, it felt like it was the perfect storm at home. And I'm just so happy for every single person that went to this game. I mean, this has been so long of fans going and watching loss after loss after loss to their biggest rivals, arguably. And finally, this fan base is rewarded after a long wait with a win over the arch rival Kansas City Chiefs. So let's jump into it starting on the defensive side of the football. Because if you hold Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs to nine points, you get to lead the show more or less. Five turnovers, two interceptions. Freaking, freaking Jaquan McMillan is making interceptions. Justin Simmons, pick after pick after pick. Wait for it. Wait for it. Justin Simmons just had another interception. That just happened right now as you're watching Sunday Night Football. 213 yards through the air, only 62 yards on the ground. Denver's defense, we called him dead. We buried Vance Joseph. And what have they done since then? They have responded well. They have told people like me, people in the comment section like you, and all of us talking heads to eat our words and to trust that they are going to figure this out and get it corrected. And you got to give them credit. They have corrected themselves, no doubt about it. Meanwhile, Denver's offense... Russell Wilson and company putting up a handful of scores, 240 yards. Um, Wilson, 12 for 19, once you take out all the sacks and whatnot for 87 yards. 140, 153 yards, excuse me, on the ground. And Javante Williams, him and highlight real Jaleel. Like, this is a very fun running back duo I want to see together for the next four or five seasons because they are really starting to get into a good rhythm. And you can tell that Javante Williams – he came back, I wouldn't say too early from his knee injury or anything like that, but he didn't look like he was running at 100%. Now he is. So you look at the stats head-to-head, -head, Denver doing everything they had to, controlling the clock, doing things well on defense, special teams, and offense, defense, and special teams. You need all three elements to beat the, to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, ignore the Packers at the very top of the screen, to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, and Denver had everything going for them. Now, before we get on to the rest of today's post-game show, today's show is being supported by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy sports app where all you have to do is pick more or less for two to six player stat projections, and you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. 
Prize Picks is super simple and user friendly. I spend one to two minutes on the app every Sunday morning making my selections. So if you're watching Sunday Night Football right now, here's who I selected. I went with more for Tyson Bajant at 203 and a half passing yards, less for Austin Eckler at 31 and a half receiving yards, and I like the more for DJ Moore at 58 and a half receiving yards. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. The link for that, by the way, is in the comments and description of today's video. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Let's run through some of the individual stats and takeaways from this game. Russell Wilson, like I said, threw three touchdown passes. Jerry Judy hauled at his first touchdown pass of the season. I'm going to just butt in for 30 seconds here and go, I don't know if Denver still wants to sell or if they think at 3-5 and five they are about to go on a run and they want to keep it intact. All I'm going to say is this. They beat the Jags in London right before the trade deadline last year and they still traded Bradley Chubb. Now, beating the Chiefs at home is going to hit a little bit different, but maybe Denver gets some good offers for Judy and Sutton, and they decide at 3-5 and five, it's still not our season, despite a win over Kansas City. I'll give you my opinion at the end of the video, but I want everyone to enjoy Victory Monday and this win over Kansas City. Javante Williams, 27 carries for 85 yards. He is just impossible to bring down. Like, there's moments where I'm like, maybe Jaleel really, highlight real Jaleel, Jaleel McLaughlin might be the best running back on this team. And then you see Javante Williams run up the middle. And you're like, I don't know what I was thinking 30 seconds ago. 33 is a problem that no one has an answer to. I love me some Javante Williams. Jerry Judy, two grabs for 50 yards, one touchdown in the corner of the end zone. Judy, unfortunately, has not had a spectacular start to the year. But he definitely raised his value a little bit right there. And we have to address the elephant in the room. And that is the NFL trade deadline. No one likes talking about selling. It's a sad, tough pill to swallow knowing that it's not your season. It's not your year. And maybe you start trading players away. So I want to get your input. Should the Broncos still sell? Or are you thinking right now, three and five, you get the buy coming up. You go to Buffalo and Minnesota after that. We had Buffalo and Minnesota after that. The Bills were the biggest frauds in the NFL, arguably. Out, off a of bye, you just beat the Chiefs at home. Who's to say Sean Payton and company can't go into Buffalo and win? I mean, the Giants almost just did that with Tyrod Taylor. And then the Cousins are, excuse me, the Vikings without Kirk Cousins, who unfortunately ruptured his Achilles today. And you think you can win those two games. At 5-5, five and five, you are very much alive. Very much alive. So let me know, should the Broncos still sell? I say only if you get an offer, you can't refuse, right? If you were looking for, let's say, a second for Cortland Sutton before, if someone offers you a second, maybe you say no now. But if someone gives you a first, I think you, still, I, I, I think you take it. If someone gives you an offer you can't refuse at three and five, it's hard to say no. Let's talk about Patrick Mahomes. This is probably the uh, best part of the show, don't you think? 24 for 38, 241 yards. Um, I know Brittany Mahomes posted on Instagram or Twitter, one of those two, that the entire Mahomes family was dealing with a bit of a stomach bug. And evidently Patrick Mahomes caught that stomach bug as well. And it showed. Like It was one of his worst NFL games. He played every single snap still. So bravo to him for being a tough guy and soldiering through. But 241 yards. Justin Simmons is his daddy. That's for sure. And then Isaiah Pacheco. I wouldn't say he was well-contained, but like they didn't go to him all that much. Eight carries for 40 yards. They sort of got into a bit of a rut and decided to air it out the rest of the way. And then Travis Kelsey. If I told you before the game Travis Kelsey had six grabs for 58 yards, we take that and run. right? We're like, that's a great deal. We're in. So I love playing Shake It Off by Taylor Swift walking off the field. I'm so happy we're done with the entire Taylor Swift saga surrounding the Kansas City Chiefs, but... Big, big win, Jigga Buggy. That was fantastic. And then Cortland Sutton also getting a touchdown as well, I should mention. Two grabs for 29 yards. And some AJ P. Ryan chipping in for a couple of uh, receptions as well for 16 yards. So ultimately, Denver, 24-9 to over Kansas City. Some big questions coming up for George and Sean Payton. At 3-5, and five, going into the bye, do they sell? 
I say only if you get an offer you can't refuse, right? If you get first round offers for Judy or Sutton, it'd be tough to say no to those. But don't trade Jerry Judy for a third round pick. Like at that point, you're just not getting, I think, what he's worth. And you might as well see how the rest of the season full unfolds. You got a buy coming up, Bills, Vikings. You could be five and five. Sean Payton's a great coach. Russell Wilson might have some Russell Wilson days left in him. This defense is clicking. Baron Brownie's back. People are getting healthy. Maybe not. I'll see you guys later. Enjoy the win. Thank you.